This week I'm looking at a game that was requested that I play countless times by an old coworker. So here you go, Jason. You can leave me alone now. Castlevania Symphony of the Night probably doesn't need much of an introduction. If you're aware of the Castlevania series, you've probably at least heard of this game and how great it's supposed to be. It's often said to be even one of the best games ever released on the original PlayStation. In all honesty, I did enjoy the game immensely, but didn't get too far into it because I kept getting lost and felt that I was just missing one or two things to be able to proceed on. But in order to keep my review schedule, I'm going to review this game as I see it, because I don't really think anything critical is going to appear later on that would alter my score. In this iteration of Castlevania, you originally start out as Richter Belmont, the guy you played as in Castlevania Bloodlines. Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. Bloodlines was the lone Genesis Castlevania game where you could play as John Morse or Eric Lickhard. Richter isn't in this one, at least not to my knowledge. I know Richter is the playable character in Dracula X or Rondo of Blood, depending on which console you're playing it on. Konami couldn't have possibly screwed this up, could they? I've never really got that far in either game, but I've seen the final boss fight of Dracula X and this isn't the room you're in, unless I'm really mistaken. I haven't seen the end of Bloodlines, so I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But did Konami really mess up their own franchise plots? Well, I can't imagine they would do something like that. Oh well. Anyway, you head up the stairs and immediately challenge Dracula to a fight to the death. You encounter some pretty bad voice acting, putting even me to shame. After this, you battle Dracula, and if you do die, you'll just be resurrected. It could be a fairly long, drawn-out battle, but you can't possibly lose, so you might just need to exercise patience. In any case, Dracula dies, and then you're given a wall of text explaining the story. Richter vanishes, Castlevania appears again, and Alucard, Dracula's son, enters the castle to find and defeat his father to prevent his cursed bloodline from expanding even further into the world. Next up, you see Alucard running full speed through a forest, jumps into a castle entryway, and starts tearing shit up. You do get access to Alucard at this point, and you can just keep running forward until you run into Death, who laughs at Alucard and his quest, takes all of his gear, and then just disappears. What a bastard. And now the game starts officially. As Alucard, you explore the castle, finding power-ups, better gear, sub-weapons, hearts, money, and eventually hopefully his father. If you've ever played a Castlevania, regardless of whether it was an older or more modern version, you know the controls. One button jumps, one attacks. Pressing up and square throws a sub-weapon. In addition, you can equip something in both of Alucard's hands. That way, if you press square to use the right hand, you can press circle the other. If you equip a weapon in both hands, you can attack with your preferred weapon. If you equip a shield, you can press the appropriate button to block projectiles, which can be extremely useful against certain enemies and bosses. There's a few more options available to you that are new to the game, and some of these mechanics carry over to the sequels, especially the portable ones. First, I'll touch on the shape-shifting that Alucard can do. I will admit that I've only found the wolf form, and I've yet to figure out where this became useful. It's a shame, really. But anyway, I've also read that there's a bat form, where you can fly around until your magic meter drains, and a mist form that allows you to float through otherwise impassable barriers. These forms are mostly used to pass puzzles. Maybe that's why I got stuck, but they are available. And speaking of magic, that is that blue bar next to your HP count. It regenerates slowly on its own, and feels a couple of the special attacks, in addition to the form changes. These attacks can be found by accident or by purchasing books from the mysterious librarian. These are performed simply by pressing a button combination and an attack button, similar to a fighting game. For example, the teleport and fireball spell combination is cast by pressing left to right in a half circle forward. Elkhard then teleports away a short distance and fires off three fireballs. There's also a basic quarter circle forward move that just uses up a small amount of your magic in order to attack with a marginally higher damage output for that strike. These skills can show their use, but I didn't need them very often. As such, my magic meter was normally completely full. There's also an experience and level up system. As you slay demons, Alucard learns experience. After hitting a certain amount, he gains a level up, which increases your HP, heart count, and magic maximum. There's never really a need to go beyond various rooms and grind though. If you explore enough, you'll find life up and heart up power ups, and these increase your maximum levels without requiring a level up. Again, the level ups are nice, simply for the bonuses that they bring, but you probably won't need to go out of your way to slay extra demons just for that extra level or two. You can also head into the library and find a shopkeeper that's willing to defy his boss and sell you some stuff, while buying any of the rare jewels that you have encountered in the castle. In Money can be obtained fairly easily just by slashing at candles, and they respawn when entering any room. So you can farm cash pretty quickly if you know the right spots. In, in addition to helpful potions, abilities, and gear, you can purchase tutorials on how to expertly take down the bosses that you've already fought, and also view a bestiary. This shopkeeper is extremely useful, although the tutorials baffle me, 
as they're expensive to buy and they only show bosses you've already taken down. This beast theory is free, but even this can only be viewed here. You'd think that that would be able to be checked out at any time. Oh well. Perhaps you notice that Alucard carries a weapon that's a bit more unique to the Castlevania universe. A sword. Granted, there are other weapons, like your fists, but Alucard prefers pointy objects as opposed to the Belmont's whips. It works out pretty well though, and there's quite a lot of swords to be found. When you go into the menu, you'll see that Alucard has different stats, including defense and attack. And naturally, better swords will increase your defensive rating. So you definitely want to be on the lookout for better weapons to make your life easier. It is very simple to get lost in the castle, so you do have a map that you can bring up at any time by pressing select. It's color-coded to show general areas, unexplored caverns, save rooms, and warp points. Unless you have Drax home memorized, you will need this map. And even with it, I couldn't tell what I was missing to proceed. I'm sure I'll hear about it in the comments section, and everyone will make me feel like a freaking moron, but hey, I'm used to it. I'm an internet reviewer, what can I say? I think the only other things I need to touch on are the graphics and the music. Graphics are incredibly impressive in a game, being that it's just a 2D game as opposed to the normal 3D ones that the PlayStation 1 usually offered. Some of the best effects are with the enemy's dying animations, especially the ones that collapse in giant mountains of flame. Freaking sweet. As for the music and sound effects, the effects are pretty standard, but the music is surprisingly catchy. I love the boss music, and I think my favorite song was from the Clock Tower. It starts off so dramatically, but then kicks into overdrive with a badass guitar riff. I love it. Castlevania Symphony of the Night really does deserve the hype it gets. Even I, an idiot who didn't even complete the game yet, can see that it has a ton of fun on that shiny plastic disc. Or in my case, the zeros and ones on my PS3's hard drive. It's a solid action RPG with a ton of gear, magical abilities, experience levels, and all the stuff from prior Castlevanias you know and love. Regardless on whether you played a Castlevania or not, this game is highly recommended. And if you do want to give me a shit for how dumb I am and at the same time give me some tips, by all means do so. Final score, 10 out of 10. This is Reaper, happy fragging.